So, uh, welcome to watch the video of uh, DBS scan clustering. So, DBS scan that uh, stands for density based spatial clustering of application with the noise. Okay. So, clustering it is a unsupervised based algorithm, unsupervised based machine learning technique. So, it should be worked with the unlabeled data. So, uh, here we are provided with a data set with the points P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. It is having X and Y. So, uh, they are also given with the data of epsilon and minimum point. So, what do you mean by this epsilon? So, it is a maximum distance between two points to be considered as a neighborhood. Then minimum points means this is a point where we should consider them as a core point. If the minimum points for that value has been should be equal to 2. Okay, That can be considered as the main core point. Okay, Now, the first step is to identify the core point, border point and noise points. So, what do you mean by a core point? Okay. So, within the neighborhood, how many number of minimum points that are present? That one we call it as the core point. So, the minimum points that should be represented within that epsilon neighborhood. Then, the border point. The border point is not a core point, but that point should be reachable from the core point. Okay. This is not a core point, but this point should be reachable to the core point. Then the final one is noise point. The noise point is neither a core point nor a border point. That should be considered as a noise point. Okay? So, first we should write the formula for Euclidean distance between two points. Okay? So, the distance between two points formula is x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. So, now we should design a table. So, in the table we should find out p1, p2, p3, p4, p5. So, in column also we should write P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. So, we should find the minimum number of distance between these points. So, the point P1 is nothing but 1, 1. So, point P2 is 2, 2. P3 is 2, 3. And P4 is 8, 8. Then P5 is 9, 9. Okay. Similarly, for the above also the same thing. So, we should find the distance between this P1 and P1. This P1 and P2, P1, P3, P1, P4, P1, P5. Similarly, for all rows, we should calculate like that. Okay. So, to obtain that P1 and P1, the value is 0. The distance between points. And between P1 and P2, it is 1.41. And it is 2.24. It is 9.90. And between P1 and P5 is 11.31. Okay. So, likewise, you should calculate for all the points present in the data. Okay. So, after finding these values, then we move to step 2. The step 2 is to identify the core points from the data. So, what do you mean by a core point? So, the core point, it must have at least two minimum points within the given epsilon distance. So, this is the maximum number of distance that should be considered for a neighborhood. Okay. So, here the minimum points is 2 and the epsilon value is 2.5. So, from the table, we should find out again the point, the neighborhoods within the epsilon value, then we should find out whether this point is a core point or not. Okay. So, the points P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, we write, then we should find out the neighbors that should within that range of epsilon given in the problem. Here, the epsilon is 2.5. So, this is the maximum distance between the two points to be considered as a core point or not. Okay. Then, final one is whether it is a core point or not, from that we should judge. Okay. So, now consider this column. Here in this column, in P1, what are the points that is less than this epsilon value? Okay. Which one is less than this 2.5? Here, this P2 and this P3. These two are less than this 2.5. So, we, we should write P2, comma P3. Okay. So, there are two neighbors. Then, similarly for P2. For P2, you can see here this one and this one. So, P1 and P3. Okay. Then for P3, P1 and P2 are less than this 2.5. Then for P4, here it is P4. This only one value is less than 2.5. So, I, I can write P5. So, only one neighbor. Then finally, for P5, which value is less than 2.5? This one only. So, that is P4. Okay. It is having only one neighbor. Now, come to this, this column, core point. So, what is the condition here they have given? The minimum points is 
2. Okay. So for P1, we are having two points. So it satisfies the condition. So yes, it is a core point. For P2, it is also having two neighbors. So it satisfies the condition. Then for P3, it is also having two neighbors. This also satisfies the condition. Finally, this P4 and P5, it is having only one neighbor, which doesn't cover the minimum distance. So it is no. It is not a core point. Okay. So here, the main core points are P1, P2 and P3. Okay, the remaining points should be considered as a noise points. Okay, now move to the step 3. We should expand the clusters. So, we should start with the core point P1, then it moves to P2, then P3. So, it forms a cluster point. So, since P1, P2, P3, they form a connected neighborhood to form a cluster 1. So, then this P4 and P5, these are the noise points because they don't have enough density to form a cluster. Step 4 is the final clusters. So, we obtain the final clusters using this DBS can clustering technique. So, the points P1, P2, P3 that represents the cluster 1 and the remaining points this P4 and P5 that represents the noise points. So, this is how the DBS can clustering technique is working. Thank you for watching the video.